The first Pincus, he reminds us that the cancerous cell has to be removed. And nobody's going to like it. But always, 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 we need to check our motivation. Are we doing, reacting, saying out of emotions or out of principle? In a very zealous way. Again, maybe even a, a jealous way. But again, I would suggest that his actions were not based on emotion, but on principle. We, I, I conclude that Pink has acted in a way that lines up with the attributes of the Almighty because, yes, he took the lives of two, but how many lives did he save? And so, as it turns out, God rewards this man even as others within the camp are bringing accusations of murder against him. Time would see something like that as harsh. Maybe a lot of people in his, their day thought it was harsh. But the reality is this, he probably saved more lives than he took. That what Pincus did was, as aggressive as some may see it as being, he removed a cancerous cell that had the potential to invade and affect the entire camp. And the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Pincus and executed judgment. And so the plague was stayed. And that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. I want that last few, those last few words to sink in. Unto all generations forevermore. And so I take that to mean that there does come a time to stand up and execute judgment in righteous fashion. Again, don't go home and get a spear and take it out into the street. And there is a time when we are to stand up with righteous zeal that is his zeal. There is a need for that. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment. Zimri had a zeal for idolatry and immoral behavior that threatened the nation. Thankfully, it was matched by Pinkus' zeal to protect the sanctity of the nation. I'm going to recommend to you that Pincus did what he did not out of emotion, but he did it based on principle, what is right. We also need to be willing to discern our own intentions. We have to be honest with ourselves because lots of times what do we like to do? We like to do what we want to do and disguise it and hide it behind what God told me to do that. And to examine our own hearts and check our own intention, our motivation, then we're not going to have to be judged later because how did Pincus execute judgment? It was accounted unto him as Righteousness, And so based on what the Almighty said about Pincus and his actions, I have to conclude that what he did was based on principle and not an act that is committed out of his emotion. I have to conclude that what he did was not selfish, but it was for the sake of the nation at large because he saw the immediate danger. If this went unchecked, what's going to happen to a people who call to be a holy nation and a kingdom of priests? And again, don't take a javelin out into the street. God's purposes. Anger and hatred would have produced a different kind of result. I mean, if Pincus had acted out of anger exclusively, if he had acted out of hatred toward these people, would the God of all have honored that? You didn't convince me. No, of course he would not, because that would fly in the face of who and what he is. That is, unjust actions is not an attribute of our God. And so again, if he had acted out of anger and hatred, I don't think that we would have seen the same results. So we'll talk about how that there are times when zeal is a good thing. Discipline, wisdom. So again, never let our emotions drive us to do something or to say something that's unwise. It doesn't mean that we can't allow our emotions to enter into it because they obviously do. But always, 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 we need to check our motivation. Are we doing, reacting, saying out of emotions or out of principle? In a very zealous way. Again, maybe even a, a jealous way. But again, I would suggest that his actions were not based on emotion, but on principle. 
the sons of Eli, including Pincus, Pincus, would eventually pay the price for their sins. In time, the one who is just, the only just one, the one who is the supreme judge, he will call everybody to answer for their actions. The first Pincus, he reminds us that the cancer cell has to be removed and nobody's going to like it. Secondly, if he could destroy us outright, don't you think he would have already done it? If he could have destroyed Adam outright, he would have already done it. So I do not believe he has that authority. And that's why Balaam could not curse what the father had blessed. But what we learn from the Torah portion called Balak is that he is very good at setting a snare and a trap. And he seduces God's people with those things that appear to be good. In this case, the beautiful daughters of Midian and the the princesses of Moab, and they seduce the sons of Israel to come to a sacrificial meal. It's always involving food somehow or another. But anyway, if they seduced them. They brought them to a sacrificial meal where they bowed down to the Baal of Peor. And it's important for us to understand the word Baal or Baal. It's not a name. It's a title more or less. And really the word Baal in Hebrew means master, but beyond that, husband. So the, the idea behind this is the creator says that he is a jealous God. He is a jealous husband, if you, as it were. And Israel is his, is his wife. And so as any jealous husband Israel, would do, if they found Israel, out their wife was consorting with others, Israel is his they'd get wife. jealous, they'd get angry, things would happen. And so this is basically what the sons of Israel did. They consorted with and joined themselves to another husband, as it were, when they cohabitated with these women and they bowed down another to the other So Zimri, on the heels of that, he took... They, they're bowing down to another husband by being with these women. And Israel is married to Yahovah at this point. I don't see that in the text. I thought Israelites were the children of Yahovah. Uh, and we're all brothers and sisters. Okay, uh, go on, Bill. So to step further, and he gets this Cosby from the Midianite women. Cosby. And they go, Cosby. and the, yeah. very near to the door Funny. of the tent of meeting, they begin to engage in things. And so all of that is to say, this is where Pincus stepped in. They meet at the, and, you the know, gate. And habitated with these women, and they bowed down to the Baal of Seor. So Zimri, on the heels of that, he takes it a step further, no, and he gets Zimri, this no. husband, as it were, when they cohabitated with these women, and they bowed down to the Baal of Seor. So Zimri... On the heels of that. Okay, bowing down to Baal's support or whatever, and then Zimri comes in. You just said on the heels of, of on the heels of that. No, in between, God Almighty said He wants all the heads hanging in the sun of anybody involved with this. And then Moses tells the people, "Kill all these people," and then. Our friends Zimri and Cosby, isn't that funny, Cosby? Oh my God, how appropriate. Uh, just show up. They don't engage in any activities. It's like your daughter's girlfriend shows up for Thanksgiving. Your daughter brings your, her, her gay girlfriend to Thanksgiving. You, we're, we can't, we're kind of clear on what's going on. Everybody's going to be upset. Uh, but no, they're not literally having sex at the door to the to the tabernacle. It immediately says, and I wondered at the time the timeline of this. Maybe he came later. This and it says no, he did. He showed up with her with in front of Moses, the congregation at the door of the of the tabern of the the of the, the tabernacle. But he says that he chased him. It was probably into the tent. It probably means he he chased him into his own tent before he thrust him through. Uh, and the the girl, uh, and it specifically says through her belly, so that's you know which, where he's definitely making sure there's not going to be a seed. I think would be the whole point. What's the what's the point of saying that? Yeah, right through the belly. Yeah, it could have been through the belly, through the back, through the belly, through the front. No, it's clearly through the belly means through the front. And if you're doing it there, you're th there's two or three have died. Two or three have died. Let's let's. 
He takes it a step further, and he gets this Cosby from the Midianite women, and they go in the very near to the door of the tent of meeting. They begin to engage in things, and so it all of that is to say, this is where Pincus stepped in. No, they weren't. And you know, like Popeye, he says, "Engage in like stands, and I can't stands no more." You know, that, 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 that. so he steps in. This is at one fourteen fifty five. Don't say it. Rather than taking again his Spanish, he took a javelin. And he stepped in and he put an end to this. And so the, the Torah portion beginning in Numbers 25 verse 10 says, And thus the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Pincus, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal, zealous with my zeal among them, so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood. Everlasting because priesthood. Re Revelation. He was zealous for his God and made atonement for the children of Israel. All right, here we are. You're at 155, what is this? 155, 46, 115, 46, excuse me. And we're, we're talking about that God Almighty has just is very impressed with this guy. And has made him an everlasting priest. He's, he's making an, an, ever, an everlasting covenant with him of peace by way of making him an everlasting priest, him and his children. Okay, that's what we are trying to achieve in the book of Revelations. We are, we want, the whole deal was to be camp, become kings and priests. Okay, so in Revelations it says, what, two? It says, uh, I have made you kings and priests. This guy got it before anybody else in the whole wide world, and you're just going, talking about it like it's you're you're barely talking about it in passing. You, you're going to read about this priesthood, and I don't think you mention it again. And so, as it turns out, God rewards this man, even as others within the camp are bringing accusations of murder against him. Negative Ghost Rider, I don't see that in the text. Maybe what even that psalm that we read that mentions uh, Zephyr and Cosby or something, uh, or, or excuse me, the the man. Pincus, he's my new hero. He's my new hero. You're lightly esteeming the rock of your salvation by minimizing what Pincus has done. No sooner did God Almighty tell Moses he wants them all dead. Moses tells the people to kill them all. No sooner does that happen than this guy Cosby walks in. And so Pincus go, runs up there and kills him. What the hell? Hero of mine, thank you. They've been going after, they've, they've been suffering. These people are tired. There's a plague within the camp because of this particular thing. There was a plague in the camp just uh, a couple chapters earlier that, that was stayed. I, 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 I'm unbelievable, unbelievable. You're talking about Pincus like he's, like you're defending him or like you're trying to explain away his actions. Hey, now, now don't y'all go out and get a javelin at, a, at an abortion clinic, okay? Don't, you know... Pincus, he was probably righteous. He was probably righteous. He probably, what, the whole title of this, act on principle, not emotion. Oh yeah, we want to make sure Pincus wasn't acting on emotion. He was probably doing the right thing. He was he was acting on principle because he was going to kill this one cancer cell. And if you don't kill that one cancer cell, those two cancer cells, or those two or three cancer cells, because the one cancer cell may be pregnant, got to thrust it through the belly. If you don't kill those, the, 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 the cancer will, will infect the entire camp. He was, yeah, uh, Pincus was a thinker. Pincus was, no, no, God Almighty said, do this. Pincus ran, out, took the first opportunity and did it right in front of everybody. And you're saying, well, he, 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 in my opinion, he, he, he was doing the good, gracious, alive. You're, as, as a soothsayer, you're doing it wrong. Now, I want to say this up front, and I will repeat this several times during this message. I do not in any way want you to get the idea that I'm suggesting that when you see something going on in the world, that you should pick up a javelin and put an end to it. There should be no reason for you to be given this disclaimer. Absolutely no reason whatsoever. You're, do you report to an archbishop or to a, a, a cardinal or a, I don't know, is there a hierarchy, a COO, a CEO, is there somebody that you're reporting to that said, Okay, on today's teaching, uh, be very careful. The people might, like, you know, take up. You would be the kind of guy that would take, you would be the kind of king that would take Maccabees 
out of the Bible because you're afraid that people are going to read it and see that, oh my God, these people repented at one point in time and they might, you know, get some ideas and repent, excuse me, revolt. They revolted at one time and they might revolt against me. So you'd be kind of got to take out Maccabee. If you're given this disclaimer, that what uh, current day, no, this guy, this can't, this is the, the 40 years in the wilderness, these guys are living in tents, they're, they're, and they're dying of this plague, and they're then chasing after other gods and, and sex. Yeah, it kindled the anger. Just, the kindled kindled the anger of Yahovah, and and you're so that has that that has nothing to do with with us today, and unless we uh, stand by as our neighbor bleeds, that's a command that we cannot do, that we uh, should keep. That's something that we should try, try to do. That, that has nothing to do with Pincus at, at that time. He, he became an everlasting priest. Him and his sons. Before it was cool. Let me just say that right here. Record that. Make sure it gets posted. You know, never mind. All right, you did. It's difficult, I guess, in this day and age for us to wrap our brains around how a man can take a javelin. And I'm not going to go into the... Yeah, it's difficult for us to wrap our heads around it. Yeah, we are not so low and so strung out and our families are plagued, our livestock is gone, probably, who knows. We just made a brass serpent to, for the serpents and, and, yeah, we have no concept of that today. No, it's, it's uh, at, at worst, he was an everlasting priest, everlasting priesthood. I mean, the, what, Melchizedek, Melech Zadik, Jesus, that's, this, that's important stuff, and you're talking like, I, well, we, 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 now don't everybody run out there with the javelin, okay, no, this is, this is important, this is important, and you just bowled over it like, you made excuses through the entire speech. You're lucky I got, you hear those trumpets? You're lucky we got a train coming and I'm going to quit talking about this. I'm not angry. I like you. I want you to keep doing what you're doing. But I want you to know, you may like, <laughs> you un, un, uh, unintentionally gave me another nugget. This pinkest fellow is my new hero, hero. And it's all because of you. But teaching that, you even, you even, even later in your video, I wish I had the, the timestamp. You, you say, uh, he'll be punished later for his sins. Good God, man! Um, he was he was saved by grace, rewarded by his works, and his works were immediate and zealous. And he got an immediate reward, everlasting priesthood. May you be like Ruth and like Pinkus. You are lightly esteeming the rock of your salvation by putting this guy to by lower lowering like lowering him, lowering your you're making excuses for him. You're adding to the scripture saying they were uh, a couple of the people were, were doing the nasty in front of the tabernacle, and so that's why he thrust them through. No, you're, you're trying to make an excuse. Why do you thrust them? No, the, read the previous verses. Read the context of it. The whole the whole thing was immediately after your your whole Balaam teaching uh, starts the chapter, and it's like, hey, they started doing another god. They started offering sacrifices to them, uh, their food offerings, uh, and and hoard them with their with their daughters. So. And it kindled the fire, and so he said, I want the heads of them in, burning in the sun. All. He wanted all of them. Pink has killed three. Two, definitely. Or three. And that stayed the play. Now, I think 25,000 or 20, whatever it was, 24,000 died because of the plague. That could have been before or after. Who knows? That could have been the, the Israelites dying of the, from, for their whoredoms. It's a, uh, it's a shame. You you really disappointed me. I didn't, I didn't start watching your speaking until ha it was halfway through you speaking. It's a two hour forty nine minute, I think, uh, video, and the first hour is music. So the second hour and whatever, and I came halfway through, and I even asked in chat, I'm like, uh, what's it, what's it? Did he say Pincus? And then they said it was uh, Phineas. Most people would know it as Phineas or something. I didn't know if that was Old Testament, New Testament. I didn't know where you were coming from. Uh, Apocrypha. Uh, and then they said uh, Phineas, and it kind of hit me that it was probably Old Testament. I know most of the New Testament characters, but believe me, yeah, I've read the Bible a couple times. I've read that specific 
book several times. I've read that specific chapter several times. Uh, but no, it never it never clicked. It never clicked. Um, and so I, I read what was going on, and and I was shocked. I was shocked that such a a great man in the Bible was being cast in a soothsayer mentality of, hey, this guy did this. Okay, but y'all just relax. You just you know do some thinking first. Don't act on your emotions. Act on principle. You know, make sure it's like, oh my God, if God Almighty came down and told you, hey, go out and steal this car. I think the first thing you would do was go out and steal that car. Who knows, maybe Pincus was like sick and tired of like taking orders after Moses and he and he and as soon as he heard that we are to kill all the, the those people, maybe he took it he was sick and tired of it, you know, and he says, I'll show, I will literally do it, you know, and do it right now and do it to those two people right there. Maybe that's 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 his worst the worst but it still doesn't make sense that Yahweh himself would make him a everlasting priest. I'm, I'm terribly, I was, in, I was invited to, to, to view your live, um, so I'm a guest there. I have no business telling you to, but boy, you're, I don't even know the word, blaspheming the Lord? You, you certainly made up a whole bunch of crap. Give me a call. I'm at 402 507 11:37. I'm Mike Banner. Uh, YouTube knows me as Nunya Biz. This is what I look like. You can't see me in the light. And uh, yeah, I'm Cray Cray. Who gives a hoot? I ain't gonna keep you on the phone very long. We uh, we want you to keep doing what you're doing. There's people that need within the Hebrew roots soothing sayings. You want to go to? I even go to church, uh, Christian church, once in a while on Sundays, just to hear the enemies, what the, the what they're preaching nowadays. They're, they're not our enemies, they're our neighbors, they're our brothers. We were there. Uh, yeah, I certainly would not, you know, I would choose my battles. I was just appalled at what I heard from you. I, I saw you, I think, three years ago on Michael Rood. You held your ground fine. You, were, you seemed like a normal guy. But no, man, I don't know. You got something going on. You got something going on. I had watched you the previous two weeks ago, and you were you were telling the people to that their place, you were that they need to know their place, and you were using some scripture. And I even read that scripture, and I'm like, I don't even understand why you're using that scripture within that scripture. Why you're trying to teach that lesson, and why you would even want to teach that lesson, you know, uh, that the people should know their place. But that's. Um, anyway, I got some uh, <clears throat> song lyrics, and I want you to put it to music. Believe it or not, they go in the very near to the door of the tent of meeting. They begin to engage in things, and so all of that is to say, this is where Pinkus stepped in. And, you know, like Popeye, he says, I've had all I can stand, and I can't stand no more. You know, that, 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 that. so he steps in. It does sound him. exactly like him. And ra <laughs> don't say it. Rather than, maybe a lot of people in his, their day, thought it was harsh. But the reality is this. He probably saved more lives than he took. He probably saved more lives than he took. And so this goes back to the idea that when yeah. you have a cancerous cell, it, if it remains in the body and it goes unchecked, chances are it's going to spread. And once it's spread, it infects the entire body until the body eventually dies. And so I look at it that what... On the day that we all learned that Brad Scott had passed, I think it was cancer, brain cancer, brain tumor. Anyway, it's, you're... Uh, you're lightly esteeming this guy. Pincus did was, uh, as sure aggressive as some may see it as being, he removed a cancerous cell that had the potential Amen. to invade God and affect it. the entire camp. He didn't think about camp, that, so going that after the entire camp. He, was, he just knew that Moses okay, said, that God said. said I mean, that. imagine if they had done what they did and gotten away with it. What would the next guy be thinking? Because that's how we are, right? Yeah, what if the next so guy goes Psalms to the So in Psalms 106, verse 28, it says, They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, 
and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Yeah, this is before. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions. Amen. And the plague break in upon them. Then Amen. stood up Pincus and executed judgment. And so the plague was stayed. Oh, this is after. I'm sorry. Here we that go. was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. I want that last few those last few words to sink in. Yeah. So what's righteousness? Unto what's righteousness? All generations Dad. forevermore. And so I take that to Daddy. What's righteous? What's what's righteous? Uh, the story of Pincus. Seeing that there does come a time. And so the plague was stayed, and that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. I want that last few, those last few words to sink in. Unto all generations forevermore. And so I take that to mean Especially if it's that Moses for God's sake. there does come a time to stand up and execute judgment in righteous fashion. Again, don't go home and get a spear and take Bill, it out into the oh street. Oh, for God's sake. All right? Oh, for God's sake. But you, I, I, don't, I don't know how I sat through this. Many times. Many times. Things that we should expect to come about. And there are there I, are I certain... Um, Great. I don't know what... I don't know what... I don't know why you went down this path of, of, of this teaching... When the, the, the text is, is, is plain and simple, it's, I'm not, I don't have a, I never had a different viewpoint than you on this, because I had never read it in, enough to be like, oh, this is actually what's going on, until you started to, because I came in halfway through your speaking, and I was like, oh, did he say Pincus? And then I like, go, oh, yeah, it's, uh, what's his name? I, and I didn't know the story, and so it's, it's not like you were trying to excuse him away. Well, you know, I'm sure he did good. No, don't you all go out and get a lance. I'm sure it did good, but I, let me emphasize. So once I went back and found out it was Numbers 25, 23, some uh, chapters, I couldn't remember. I was shocked. I was shocked, and I was, I was very disappointed in you, in you teaching that. You got a good thing going. Or maybe you don't. God, if I watch a third video of yours, maybe I'll have a heart attack and uh, and really give you a, a verbal thrashing. All right. May the Holy Spirit be with us all. The true wife. Yeah, hold on. 